So resolution is kind of a question that comes up a lot in my field. How big or high quality is a picture and what can it be used for? So let me tell you a little bit about that. Here we have an example of cherries. It's a fairly high resolution photo. Now what I mean by high resolution is there are a lot of pixels in it. So resolution is essentially how many pixels make up the photo. Now we can see how big this image is by going up to the image menu and choosing image size. So at the top it gives us our pixel dimension and if I really wanted to I could actually see this in percentage but we're working in pixels so let's leave it there and that translates to the document size which is 35 and a half inches wide by 26 and a half inches tall at 72 pixels per inch or DPI and that's our resolution so this image if it were in a space that required 72 dots per inch would be able to fill 35 and a half inches. So what uses 72 dots per inch? TV screens, computer monitors, the internet, all of those are 72 DPI resolution. Now what about printing? Printing is kind of where this goes a little funky because I'm sure you've all had an image that you've maybe got from the internet and it looks great on your screen but when you try printing it out on your printer it will print like the size of a postage stamp. So what's up with that? The reason for that is because printing happens at 300 dots per inch. Now we can see how big of an area this is able to print by unchecking the resample image box and then changing the resolution on this. So if you type in 300 pixels per inch, you'll notice up here the pixel dimensions of this picture didn't actually change. So we have not changed the resolution or the literal size of this image, but what we have done is say, well, I want to see how many inches it will fill up if it were 300 dpi. So by unchecking resample image, you're preserving your image. So this would actually be able to fill an eight and a half inch wide area by a 6.4 area. Um, we could hit OK and that would actually change the document resolution to 300 but I'm going to hit cancel and just show you literally what that looks like. If you're following along what you'll do now is make a new file go to file and choose new and let's type in 300 dpi and then change the width to 11 inches and the height to 8.5 inches and type in 300 pixels per inch for the resolution and change the background contents to white. Let's click OK. You'll notice you get a new tab up here at the top and it's called the document name which is 300 dpi. Now we need to make another one so go back to file and choose new and this time let's name it 72 dpi. And we'll leave all these settings the same except we'll change the resolution to 72 not 720, 72 pixels per inch and say OK. Alright, so we have these three set up right now and if I click on these tabs I can move between my documents and they all look roughly the same size on my screen but as we're learning size is kind of relative. So click on the one that says the uh, image of the cherries that has the image of the cherries. We need to select everything so you can go to the select menu and select all or hit command A and then copy which is the edit menu copy or command C and then let's move over to our 72 DPI one first and then paste by going to edit and paste or command V. Alright that's how big this image is if I was trying to fill the same size of area in both 300 and D7, the 300 dpi and 72 dpi. Now if I zoom out by hitting command minus minus a couple times and you can see over here in my layers I've got this cherry as its own layer. If I hit command T I'll actually see the physical dimensions of this and you can see it's much 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 bigger than our actual canvas size. So I'm going to hit enter to get out of that and hit command zero to pop it back up to the screen size. All right, let's go to our 300 dpi document and paste. So I'm going to use the shortcut this time, which is command V. And there it is in our 300 dpi document. This is how much area that high resolution photo can fill. Now, 
Typically, you don't want to enlarge a picture beyond its original resolution size, but there, like in all things, is kind of a, a little fudge or gray area. Typically, you can expand something, I would say, about 25% its original size before it starts losing its image quality. So if I did that by hitting Command-T and holding Shift-Option, click and drag, and hit Enter to end, end it. Um, it still looks really good, even when I zoom way, way, way far in. Now, to give you an idea of why we shouldn't take something small and just transform it to make something big, I'm going to select just a small area of this picture and copy by hitting Command-C. Now, I'm going to hide that layer and paste by hitting Command-V. So now I just have this one little chunk of this image. If I wanted to fill my piece of paper with this image and so I'd transform it by hitting Command T and then I'm going to move this up to the corner, hold Shift so it doesn't stretch and just move it all the way down until it fills up the picture and hit Enter. What that did is it took all of our tiny little original pixels and tried to expand them and if I move in close enough here you'll actually see the individual dots or pixels and because it was creating pixels where there weren't any before Photoshop just kind of guesses on how to fill in that area and it starts becoming blurred or pixelated so you never really want to print anything that looks pixelated it's one of the, kind of the first lessons we learn in printing but that in a nutshell is resolution and how it works and you can always find the resolution of your image by going to image and image size.